Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A logical and systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSIR net. In the module 2, Principles of Stereochemistry, Configurational and Conformational Isomerism in Acyclic and Cyclic Compounds will be covered. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, New MHRD, New Delhi. So, in this module, let us look at what we are going to learn. We will mainly look at uh, what are the various principles of stereochemistry. We will also study about uh, how to assign configurational isomerism in acyclic and cyclic compounds and how conformational isomerism exists in cyclic and acyclic compounds. Let us recall some of the things what we have studied earlier. So, the first one is to assign configuration R or S, we have to follow Kahn in Gold Prolog rule or simply this is called as a CIP rule and conformation is basically related to stability. So, if uh, various conformational structures are possible, the least energy is the most stable structure. So, we will be identifying which conformation is the most stable conformation for a given compound. And mainly in the case of cyclohexane systems, equatorial groups have less steric strain compared to the axial groups. In the axial, we have 1, 3 diaxial interaction that exists. So, whereas in the case of when the group is in the equatorial orientation, there is no such 1, 3 diaxial interaction which does not destabilize the system. So, let us look at the first problem. So, in this problem, we are going to identify which of the following that has the least strain. So, when you look at these kind of structures, this is a old book structure. So, here a dot, a thick dot is given. In this structure, there are two dots are given and in this structure also, these two dots are given. So, these actually represent the group is actually pointing upwards or towards the observer. So, in other words, we say if both are pointing towards the observer, we say this is a cis type arrangements. Here also, these two dots are there, this represents a cis type arrangements that is the both the groups are pointing towards the observer and if there is one dot and one another one is not having a dot means this is having a trans orientation or one group is pointing towards the observer and another one is pointing away from the observer. So, this is the basic thing we have to remember before we start working out this particular problem. So, here we have four structures and we have to identify which one has the least strain. In other words, which is the more stable one. or which is having the least energy. So, here it can be structure 1 or structure 2 or structure 3 or structure 4. We have to find out which structure is going to have the least strain. In other words, the most stable one. So, before we solve this problem, we need to draw the ring strain that is present because if you look at all the structures, all of them are cyclic structures. So, the cyclic structures will have diaxial strain and we have to identify which one is having the least strain and which one is having the maximum strain. So, we can draw these structures as a cyclohexane char conformation because this is a 6 carbon unit. So, this 6 carbon unit that is the cyclohexane unit can be drawn as a char conformation. So, here as I mentioned one group is pointing towards the observer that is one hydrogen is pointing towards the observer, another one is away from the observer. So, this is basically the transfusion. So, this is how the transfusion of the cyclohexane is given. Here if you look at both the hydrogens are far away from each other and that is the reason here there is no ring strain. And if you look at the 
these two are pointing towards the observer or this is a cis connection. So, in this cis connection if you look at these two hydrogens are in the same side or this is what is called as a cis connection. So, in this particular case we have various diaxial interactions that exist. So, here we have a diaxial interactions as shown here. So, all these diaxial interactions destabilize destabilize the ring structure. So, compared to the first structure where we have the transfusion in this cis fusion we have more strain. In other words this is having high energy and when we move to the next structure there is a double bond in the bridge head. So, according to Brett's rule this is the violation that means, a bridge head cannot have a double bond because the bridge head if it has to have a double bond that is nothing but a sp 2 hybridized carbon atom. So, a bridge head is so strained that we cannot have a sp 2 configure uh, sp 2 hybridization in this particular structure because it is a small ring system. There are only 6 carbons in this particular ring unit. So, this is called as a small cyclic system. So, in a small cyclic systems the bridge head carbon cannot have a double bond because attaining planarity of this small system is going to be highly strained. So, this violates or this is in violation of the Brett's rule. So, this structure cannot exist and when we go to the next one which is a three membered ring. So, as we know three membered ring has lots of angular strain. So, that is the reason this structure is also having a huge strain. So, out of all the four structures only the first structure which is having a transfusion has the least strain and we can say that this is the most stable structure for this particular these four compounds. Let us move on to the next problem. Here we are going to identify what is the most stable compound. So, how do we find which is the most stable compound? Here we have C 6 units or all are cyclohexane derivatives and all cyclohexane derivatives have some substituents. So, we have a ethyl group, we have a methyl group, we have another ethyl group. Here again ethyl methyl and the ethyl groups are there all the structures have the same type of or uh, same type of uh, groups which are present. So, if the bond is uh, the bond is pointing towards the observer and here also the bond is pointing towards the observer in this case also the bond is pointing towards the observer. So, that means we can say these two are cis orientation and similarly these two are again cis orientation. So, in this case we have a trans orientation because one group is pointing upwards another group is pointing downwards and here again we have two trans connections and in this particular case these two are trans and these two groups are cis and here these two are cis and these two are trans. So, if you look at overall we have all cis in one compound, we have all trans in another compound, we have cis and trans combination in the other two compounds. So, we have to identify which is going to be the most stable one. To find out we have to draw the char conformation for all the compounds. So, let us draw the first char conformation for the compound 1. So, here we have a ethyl unit, we have a methyl unit and we also have another ethyl unit. So, all are pointing above the plane. So, here we have the methyl group which is pointing above, here also we have a equatorial ethyl group and another equatorial ethyl group both are pointing above the plane. So, in other words this compound has all the three substituents pointing above the plane, only in the case uh, we have written methyl as a red bond, the red bond means there is going to be one three diaxial interactions between this methyl group and other hydrogen atoms. So, this is going to have some instability, but when the ethyl groups are pointing towards the equatorial position they are not having any 
steric hindrance or one three diaxial interaction. So, this is going to be a little bit a stable orientation for the ethyl groups and we can also do the ring flip. When we do the ring flip, now the ethyl groups are becoming a from the equatorial position they become axial one and the axial methyl group becomes equatorial methyl group. So, ring flip leads to two ethyl groups in the axial orientation which increases the instability because in this particular case we will be having more uh, diaxial interactions 1 3 diaxial interactions. So, this compound may have more uh, instability because the ethyl groups are in the equi uh, axial position. But when we move to the next compound here one of the ethyl group is in the equatorial position, another ethyl group is also in the equatorial position, the methyl group is also in the equatorial position. So, in other words this compound has all the three groups in the equatorial position only. So, that means this is going to be the most stable one because here we will not have any diaxial interactions when these uh, substituents are actually present in this particular system. But when we move to the other one when we do the ring flip, the ring flip leads to all the substituents in the axial position which is going to be quite unstable. So, that means this compound may not undergo ring flip that easily because this is going to be quite unstable compared to the highly stable all equatorial orientation. So, this molecule will prefer to stay in the all equatorial orientation. When we move to the next compound here one of the ethyl group is in the equatorial position, one methyl group is also in the equatorial position, but one ethyl group is in the axial orientation which will attract one three diaxial interaction. So, this is going to be less stable compared to the all equatorial conformer. And if we do a ring flip, that ring flip leads to two equatorial uh, two groups in the axial orientation which is quite unstable, only one of the ethyl group is in the equatorial position. So, this leads to a little bit more unstable orientation during the ring flip and when we go to the last one, in this particular case we have two substituents already in the axial position which is quite unstable and when it undergoes ring flip we end up with the two equatorial uh, substituents which is much better. So, in this particular case the ring flip may lead to a better stabilized product compared to the other one and if you look at all the four compounds the second one is the only one where we have all the substituents in the equatorial orientation and this is going to be the most stable form and all the other compounds are going to be quite unstable because all of them have one three diaxial interactions which is quite unstable or which gives high energy conformer to that particular system. So, they are quite unstable. So, this is going to be the most stable conformation for this particular compound. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to look at what is the stable configuration for the following molecule. Here one unique thing is we have a double bond. So, when we have a double bond that is going to give little bit uh, complication to the structures. So, that is the reason if you look at uh, some of the structures we have a twist to board conformations given here. So, when we look at the solution to this uh, problem we can actually draw the cyclohexane char conformation in a three dimensional structure. So, when we draw the three dimensional structure we can easily visualize the interactions or the steric interaction between the this methyl group has three hydrogen atoms, this methyl group also has three hydrogen atoms. So, there is interaction between these hydrogen atoms, there is a steric repulsion we can say between these two hydrogen atoms because if you look at the structure here it is the distance between these two methyl uh, hydrogens are 2.27 angstrom and in this particular case we have only 2.18 angstrom. So, that means these two hydrogens are in close proximity with this methyl groups hydrogens. So, this is one structure 
and when we look at the other structure where the alkene is pointing in the equatorial position uh, downwards these methyl groups are actually far away from each other if you look at uh, the distance it is more than 3 angstrom unit so that means these methyl groups hydrogens do not interact with each other so this is another uh, set of arrangements and we have a twist boat uh, structures uh, given here and we already know char conformation is the most stable one which has the lower energy compared to the twist boat conformation. So, these two structures are ruled out because they are high energy conformations. So, we have to decide between these two structures only as the most stable one. As we have seen the first structure has the methyl hydrogens interactions that is both the methyl uh, hydrogen atoms are in close proximity. So, the steric hindrance is going to be appreciable in this particular case. So, this is going to have high energy conformation compared to this one we have only the lowest energy here. So, we can clearly say that this structure is the most stable conformation. So, that means the structure B is the stable conformation for the given structure. Let us move on to the next problem here we are going to look at uh, symmetry elements. So, here we have a carbon having a, a carboxylic acid unit and here we have an alkene which is also having a carboxylic acid unit and in this compound what are all the different types of conformations and configurations are possible. One is given like a R configuration. So, this carbon is having a R configuration that is given and this can also have as a S configuration that is also given this compound can have plane of symmetry or center of symmetry. So, here if you from the center if you go in one direction you get a carboxylic acid, you go in the opposite direction you may also get a carboxylic acid. So, here again if you go in one direction you get a hydrogen, if you go in the other direction you get another hydrogen. So, when we draw this structure in a two dimensional form we also see that uh, this compound may have center of symmetry. So, this is a little bit tricky thing because we are drawing this in a two dimensional structure it can deceive you very easily. So, we have to be very careful in identifying what symmetry elements are present in this particular compound. And when we talk about the plane of symmetry the entire molecule is actually planar except this particular unit. So, this is uh, one of the unit is pointing towards the observer, the carboxylic acid is pointing towards the observer, the hydrogen is pointing away from the observer. So, that means this compound does not have a plane of symmetry we can rule out and here also if you look at this is in the plane of the molecule, this is pointing towards the observer. So, it may not also have center of symmetry. So, that also we can rule out. Then what is left out is only we have R configuration or S configuration. So, how do we solve this whether it is R configuration or S configuration? So, here the three dimensional structure is given for this compound. So, this is the alkene unit, we have a carboxylic acid unit. So, that is pointing towards the observer and we have a hydrogen unit that is also present here. So, according to CAP rule the carboxylic acid gets the highest priority. So, this is given as number 1 and this is given as number 2. Similarly, we have a this is happening in the alkene unit and we also have a carbon with the carboxylic acid unit that is pointing towards the observer, hydrogen is pointing away from the observer that is also shown here. So, we can give number 1, 2, 3, 4 like this and if you rotate the molecule you can see here how it is actually given 4 the group 4 is actually pointing away from that 1, 2, 3. So, if you look at uh, how the connections are given this is in the clockwise direction. So, you can tell that this compound is having a R configuration. So, that way we can say this is not having plane of symmetry that we have seen, this is also not having center of symmetry that is also we have seen and only thing we have to assign the configuration according to CAP rule. Since the hydrogen is pointing away from the observer then it becomes very easy for us to assign the configuration and this compound can be given as the R configuration. 
and let us look at the next problem. In this problem, we are going to look at uh, again whether the molecule has a plane of symmetry. So, there is a little bit difference from the previous problem. Here, it is basically a allene type molecule. So, we have a carbon with the two double bonds. So, this is a allene type molecule. So, in this allene type molecule, we are going to look at whether the molecule has a plane of symmetry or center of symmetry. So, if you look very carefully, this is pointing towards the observer, this is pointing away from the observer and there is nothing uh, similar groups present on the other side. So, we can completely rule out uh, there is no center of symmetry and uh, this molecule actually present in two planes. So, one is in the same plane as the paper, these two groups are pointing away and uh, towards the observer. So, they are in two different planes. So, we can also rule out this compound cannot have a plane of symmetry. So, the only thing left out is we have to find out whether it is having R or S configuration. So, we can also draw a three dimensional structure as shown here. So, here let us look at uh, what are all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 which are given. So, this 2 is given to a methyl group. So, this methyl group is pointing towards the observer. So, this is pointing towards the observer and OME is pointing away from the observer. So, this is the oxygen, this is the methyl group. So, this is pointing away from the observer. So, what we can say is like uh, oxygen gets the uh, highest priority compared to carbon. So, this is the number 1 and this is number 2 and then we have to find out which one gets the highest priority in these two carbons also. So, here if you look at this is a methyl group and this is a carbon with the carbonyl unit and another CH2. So, this gets the highest priority and the methyl group gets the least priority. So, the molecule can be rotated in such a way that we can actually see uh, this type of arrangement in a criss cross arrangement or like a plus arrangement. So, here we have the groups 1, 2, 3 are shown here and 4 is actually pointing like this. So, based on that we have to now decide whether it is in the clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction. So, we know exactly this is 1, 2 and 3 groups are actually in the clockwise direction, 4 which is the least priority group is actually pointing away from the observer. So, that is the reason whatever the clockwise configuration we are assigning as R configuration is the compounds final configuration. So, that way this molecule we can assign the configuration R. Let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem we are going to find out the absolute configuration of the two stereogenic centers in the following molecule. So, what are all the two stereogenic uh, centers present in the molecule? Let us work out uh, what are all the stereogenic centers. So, we have a stereogenic center, center at 5, we also have another stereogenic center at 6. So, these are all the two stereogenic centers and if you look at the configurations given it is either 5 or 6 r or 5 or 6 s, 5 s, 6 r and 5 s, 6 s. So, that means both r r configuration or both s s configuration or the combination of two one is having r another one is having s. So, these are all the four possibilities and all the four possibilities are given here we have to now find out which one is the right structure. So, let us identify the first carbon that is the carbon number 5 we will look at and here this is the chiral center or the stereogenic carbon for which we are going to assign the configuration. So, this is attached to other carbon atoms, three different carbon atoms are attached here. So, one is having a methyl group and an ethyl group as an attachment, another one is having a alkene uh, CH2 is present and uh, another methyl group is present and this carbon has two hydrogen attached to it. So, and the chiral carbon or the stereogenic carbon already has the hydrogen atom. So, now the major thing we have to look at is the hydrogen is actually pointing towards the observer. So, whatever the configuration we are going to find for the central carbon, it is going to be the reverse of what we are going to assign because the hydrogen is pointing towards the high lowest priority group is pointing towards the observer. So, we have to give the opposite configuration. So, let us find out how we have to assign the configuration. So, here this is the hydrogen atom which is pointing towards the observer. So, this is given the number 4 and 
here we have two different uh, which is having the highest priority if we have to assign means here we have a carbon here again we have a carbon two carbon and the third carbon is having an oxygen unit. So, if we are going to look at this carbon and this carbon. So, here the double bonded carbon can be considered like another methyl group. So, this carbon has three methyl groups or three carbon atom attached to this one and all the carbon has only hydrogen atoms. But if you look at this carbon atom, we have two carbon atoms which are having the carbon units and the third one is having an oxygen unit. So, this will get the highest priority and this one get the next uh, priority and uh, the carbon with two hydrogens are getting the lowest priority, a uh, third priority. So, we can say 1, 2, 3. So, in what direction it is present you can actually find out. So, that is in the clockwise direction. So, this is nothing but R since hydrogen is pointing towards the observer instead of R it should be S. Yes. And if we go for the other carbon which is this carbon unit and here we have a methyl group, here we have a ethyl group and here we have a carbon with oxygen. So, this gets the highest priority and this one has carbon with the two other carbon atoms. So, this gets the second highest priority and this is having two hydrogen atoms instead of three. So, this gets the third priority and this one gets the fourth priority. So, now again the fourth priority group is pointing towards the observer. So, whatever configuration we are going to assign has to be opposite we have to give. So, that means 1, 2, 3 are in the counter clockwise direction. So, it should be given as yes. Since the methyl is pointing towards the observer it should be R. So, if you look at the assignment for this one. So, we have to give this as a 5 s. So, this is the 5 s and the 6 r configuration. So, this carbon is going to have the r configuration that is the 6th carbon. This is going to have the s configuration. So, the final answer is 5 s and 6 r. Let us look at the next problem. So, in this problem we are going to assign the absolute configuration of the 2 stereogenic center in the following molecule. The numbers given are 1R, 4R, 1R, 4S, 1S, 4R and 1S, 4S. So, this is very similar to the previous one where we have seen both are having RR or both are having SS and the combination of R and S. So, these are all the four possibilities that is po possible for this compound. So, what are the two chiral center that is present is we have chi chiral center one here, we have another chiral center here. So, if you look at this is the number one and this is number four. So, for the first chiral center we are going to look at what are the different groups that are present and we are going to assign the numbering for these kind of uh, these four groups. So, here as we have seen in the earlier case we have a carbonyl unit which gets a highest priority. So, this is given number 1 and uh, we have a alkene carbon here. So, this alkene carbon gets the second highest priority because every double bond is considered like a two single bond. So, we can assume that there are two carbon atoms present in this particular carbon and here if you look at the top one we have two hydrogen atoms and the third one is a carbon. Here we have all four hydrogen all three hydrogen atoms. So, that way if you have to give the numbering. So, this bridge head uh, the carbon which is connected to the bridge head gets the third priority and then the last priority is the methyl group. Since the methyl group is pointing away from the observer it becomes very easy for us to give the num, uh, assignment whatever is uh, we are getting that is going to be the configuration for this one. So, we have group 1, 2, 3 they are in the clockwise direction. So, this is going to be R configuration R configuration for this particular carbon that is carbon number 1 is having R configuration. So, these two are ruled out they are not the right uh, assignment and we will have to move on to the next carbon. So, when we come here, here again we have two uh, the carbon attached to two uh, other unit that means, a double bond is present here. We have two hydrogen atoms which is attached to the carbonyl unit. 
we have a hydrogen atom which is the least priority, but only thing is the least priority group is pointing towards the observer. So, we have to give the opposite configuration what we assign here. So, the hydrogen is pointing towards the observer as shown here and the rest of the groups are assigned here because here we have two carbon atoms because double bond is there. So, we can assume that there are each one will be considered as a single bond. So, this carbon gets the highest priority. Here carbon with the two hydrogen atoms and a CO unit is present. So, this gets the second priority and when we go to the top one here we have again two hydrogen atoms it is again attached to another single carbon atom only. So, here we have oxygen, here we have carbon. So, between these two we can assign this carbonyl connected car, this carbon will get the highest priority. So, this is given number 2 and this is number 3. So, 1, 2, 3 this is in the counter clockwise direction. So, it should be yes but the hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, this will become like instead of S we have to reverse the configuration. So, this will become R. So, both are R configuration. So, the first one is having the both R configuration. So, this is the correct assignment for this compound. So, let us move on to the next one. So, in this uh, problem we are going to do a match of the following. So, we have two columns given in one column we have few structures given and in the second column we have given some elements chiral elements are given first one is a chiral center second one is chiral axis third one is chiral plane the last one is helical chirality. So, these are all the different things given now to solve this problem we have to look at few more things because chiral center we are familiar with, but we, what we are not familiar with is chiral axis or chiral plane or helical chirality. So, let us look at what are these things and then we will try to solve the problem. So, what is the chiral center? Chiral center has a carbon attached to four different groups. So, this is what is called the simple definition of a chiral center or stereogenic center. And if you look at the previous structures, we do not have any chiral center in the compound. So, that means this is completely ruled out. So, we do not have a chiral center compound in this one. So, anything which is having this uh, number 1 in the answer is not the right one. So, if you look at all these things, none of the answer has this first one. So, that means all could be the correct answers. Now, we have to find it out which one is the correct one. So, we can move on to the we are not having a chiral center for this compound. So, we can move on to the next one which is a chiral axis. So, what do you mean by chiral axis? So, here is a biphenyl structure which is given. So, we have an axis that is connecting to aromatic ring. So, this is uh, the connection that is present in the biphenyl system and if you look at the three dimensional structure of this compound. This is basically a planar molecule because we only have the aromatic ring. So, here you can very well see that this is exactly like a single plane. So, we know aromatic system is planar and here we have a clear uh, three dimensional representation of this molecule. When we rotate this molecule, this becomes like a completely planar molecule and if you look at the angle that is present between these two rings that is basically 0 degree. We will come to this what is this angle 0 degree we are talking about just in a minute. So, the actual structure given in the problem is having the two aromatic rings. So, this is the basic unit that is present in the compound that is very similar to a biphenyl unit, but what is extra that is present here is we have a nitro group, two nitro groups present and we also have two methyl groups that are present. So, that means these are additional things from the biphenyl unit. So, what happens when these kind of additional groups that are present? Again, if you have to look at the structure, these additional groups are present in the ortho position. They are not present at uh, different positions. They are present at the ortho position to the connection of the biphenyl unit. So, which bond through which bond this two aromatic rings are connected ortho to that we have the substituents that is present. So, what it will uh, do to the structure? So, if we carefully look at the structure, 
one of the structure is a planar one, but another one is actually not in the same plane like this particular plane, but again this is also a planar. We have two planar structures, but both the planar structures are not the same plane. So, we have two different plane. One is if we assume that this particular ring is perpendicular to the plane, this particular ring let me let me mark this as a A ring and this as a B ring. So, the A ring if we assume that it is the plane that is on this screen of this particular uh, computer, then this B ring is actually looking like a perpendicular to this particular ring. So, this is pointing towards the observer and this is pointing away from the observer. So, they are present as two different planes and not as a single plane. And if we look at uh, the structures, what is the bond angle or the dihedral angle that is present or produced between these two, if we look at this is also called as a torsional angle. So, in the calculation of torsional angle, four atoms are considered and these four atoms are actually forming two different planes. So, we have an atom A, atom B and atom C these three atoms form one plane, then atom B, atom C and atom D, they form another plane. So, two different planes are formed by two, three, three groups atoms. First one is A comma B comma C, the second one is B comma C comma D. So, these two form two different planes and the angle between these two planes are called dihedral angle or torsional angle. So, here if you look at there is close to 75 degree that is present that means in other words the two rings are having 75 degree angle between their planes. So, that is what is called the dihedral angle and if you look at the simple biphenyl in the case of simple biphenyl it is just 0 0.19 we can assume that it is actually close to 0 degree. So, that means all the both the rings are basically planar in nature. So, that is how this dihedral or the torsional angle tells that these two are not in the same plane and since they are not same between the two planes, there is a chiral axis that passes through this molecule and this chiral axis is called like the this compound contains a chiral axis. And this is how we can explain that a biphenyl molecule containing four ortho substituents have chiral axis that is present. And we are going to the next one that is called as a chiral plane. We are going to look at what is a chiral plane. In the previous case, we only saw a chiral axis. Here we are going to see a chiral plane. So, the molecule is drawn in the three dimensional structure as shown here. So, this looks like a a tub like structure we can see here and this is the two uh, carbon atoms having the double bond which are shown here are projected here which is pointing towards the observer or towards the observer and uh, other carbons from this carbon, this carbon is actually going towards our back of the screen and similarly this carbon is actually connected. Uh, in the front carbon is connected here and this is going backwards. So, this is not a planar molecule as you can see here and uh, let us see this in action. So, we can see the rotation of the molecule. So, you see these two carbons are in one plane, other carbons form a different plane like that we can actually see the entire molecule. So, this is the y axis rotation we are seeing and uh, this clearly tells that this molecule is not a planar molecule. So, here even though we have all carbon atoms present here, they are not present in the same plane, they are not having chiral axis, but they have a optical mirror image relationship. What we can say is there is a planar chirality present, because some of the carbons are in one plane and some other carbons are in a different plane. So, this whole molecule the three dimensional structure of this molecule can be considered to contain a chiral plane. 
So, the next one is the helical chirality. So, helical chirality means this is like a, if you are walking towards in a steps. So, in the spiral how do you actually move up or whether you move down. So, both the cases we start from the one side and we are going towards the up we are moving from the left hand side and then again taking again left hand side like that we are moving. Similarly, we can also move like this. So, we move towards the right first and then turn like a spiral we can go up. So, these are all the two ways we can go from one side to another side and similarly, if you look at the connection of the rings here if you look at we start from here we go towards the left then we come to the left like that we go up. So, these kind of chirality can be shown by many compounds they are called as helical chirality. So, if we look at uh, the final answer to this problem we can say that this compound is having a chiral axis and the second compound is having a chiral plane and the third compound is having helical chirality. So, what is the answer which has all the three in the same order? So, the last one is having the A second chiral axis and B chiral plane and C helical chirality. So, this is how we can solve this problem and here the new things what we have studied is what is a chiral axis, what is a chiral plane and what is helical chirality. So, based on that we can actually solve this particular problem. So, there is another problem we are going to look at which is also similar to the previous one. Here the molecule is chiral and possesses a chiral plane, another one molecule is chiral, but possesses a chiral axis. The third one is compound is achiral, but possesses a plane of symmetry and the fourth one is molecule is achiral and possesses a center of symmetry. So, these are all the four different possibilities for this compound. If you look at the compound here they have actually shown this pointing towards the observer. This part of the compound is pointing towards the observer and there is a methylene bridge which connects two uh, benzene rings or aromatic systems. So, here we are going to find out what is the right statement which explains the symmetry present in this particular given compound. So, let us look at the three dimensional structure. Before that we will look at what is a planar chirality. So, planar chirality is nothing but a stereoisomerism. This is resulting from the arrangement of out of plane groups. So, this is the most important one the out of plane groups with respect to a plane chirality plane. So, this chirality plane can be present within the molecule or the chirality plane can be present outside the molecule. So, we will be looking at the three dimensional structure to see how this actually is can be seen. So, here is a simple example in the given problem we have two bromo groups, but here we are only for simplicity we are taking only one bromine and we are going to look at the chiral structure how it is present. We know this benzene ring is planar. Similarly, the second benzene ring is also planar, but these two planar rings are connected by two methylene carbons. So, when two methylene carbons connecting two planar rings basically what happens is we have two different planes that exist and because of the pi pi repulsion if you carefully look at the structure there is a small twist that exists in this particular case. So, here you can see these two carbons they are not exactly planar, but they are twisted to a small degree. So, this is the major difference when we connect two aromatic systems through a CH2 or the methylene bridges and here we have only one bromine atom. So, that is the structure we have uh, given here in the three dimensional uh, representation and this is the other structure where we have uh, the bromine on the left hand side. So, one the bromine is on the right hand side in the second structure bromine is on the left hand side. So, if you look at these two structures they are exactly the mirror images as you can see here there is a mirror if we keep in between then these two structures are exactly the mirror image of each other. So, when these kind of uh, 
mirror object mirror image relationship exist between these two compounds we say there is planar chirality that exists between these two type of compounds and if we extend the same to the di substituted unit what we have seen here is a mono substituted unit so if we extend the same to the di substituted unit there is a plane which can be kept here and uh, let us look at the 3d animation of this structure So, here you can actually see exactly the mirror image of the left side image and the right side images are both exactly one and the same and they can be seen like a separated by a mirror plane. If we draw a mirror plane in between these two molecules, one side of the molecule is exactly the mirror image of the other side of the molecule. So, that is what you can see two mirror image molecules, but these two are non superimposable mirror image molecules. So, that is the reason we say there is a chiral plane exist or this compound has a planar chirality. So, the correct statement for the following molecule is the molecule is chiral, but possesses a chiral axis is not because we have seen a chiral plane not a chiral axis. Of course, the molecule is chiral. So, these two are already ruled out. So, the final thing that is the correct answer for this particular compound is the molecule is chiral. Yes, this molecule is chiral that we have seen and it also possesses a chiral plane. So, through the three dimensional rotation or the small animation, we have seen that this molecule and its mirror image are having a chiral plane. So, the correct answer for this compound is the compound is having a chiral the compound is chiral and it is having a chiral plane. So, that is the correct answer. So, here there are the examples shown here. If you look at the whole molecule from one particular side, this is not a planar molecule because this is one aromatic ring where we have the two bromine atoms attached and another aromatic ring on the other side and this is the methylene bridge that is connecting. So, we can clearly see that this entire molecule is not a planar molecule. So, we can say the compound is having chirality and again we have seen that there is a chiral plane that is kept outside of the molecule. So, to the mirror if we keep the chiral plane outside of this molecule, then we have object mirror image relationship between this compound and its enantiomer. So, that is the uh, reason we can say this compound is having a chiral plane. So, here are other two examples which are shown for your easy uh, viewing. So, here the bromine atom is kept at the top and the bottom and in another case the methylene bridge is kept at the top and at the bottom. So, here you can see there is a twist a small twist that exists between these two structures. So, here again you can see the twist these two carbon atoms are little bit twisted similarly these two carbon atoms are having small twist. So, that is the reason this compound is having is chiral and it is also having a chiral plane. So, if you look at this molecule this compound this type of compounds are basically called as 2 2 para cyclophane derivatives and there is a strong repulsion between the two aromatic ring resulting in the distortion of the aryl ring to give a shallow boat like conformation. So, that is what I said this there is a repulsion between both the aromatic ring. So, this aromatic ring and this aromatic ring e repel each other due to that there is a small twist that we have seen here and this is responsible for a very good opto electronic properties of this cyclophane derivatives. So, this is one of a very very important type of compounds which are now being used in many opto electronic devices. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to find out the absolute configuration of the following compounds. So, we have compound 1 and we have compound 2. So, these are having various aromatic rings and this compound is again connected with the various bridges. So, methylene bridges connect a aromatic system from para this is a para di substituted system. So, there is a methylene bridge which connect from one end to the other end and we are going to see what is the chirality or the absolute configuration of these two compounds.
So, we have seen the helical chirality. So, this is like a helicene like I mean this is like a spiral we have seen earlier also. So, this is basically the front carbon or the front unit front aromatic unit and this is the back aromatic unit. So, the front to the back how it goes is in the counterclockwise direction. So, this is basically the minus if it goes in the clockwise direction that is called the plus here it is going in the counterclockwise. So, that is where it is called as the minus isomer and here you can see the three dimensional structure. So, this is in one plane and the back carbon this is the back side aromatic ring is just below the plane. If we rotate the molecule you can actually see the clear difference. So, this is starting from one plane it goes slowly 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 and then it actually goes to a different plane. So, these kind of uh, this is very similar to how do you walk in the spiral or in a steps. So, this is what is called the helical chirality and if you look uh, in a very planar way this is uh, this plane is actually on the screen of the computer this is perpendicular to the computer. So, here you can see from one end to the other end when you walk you are actually going down. So, one is above and another one is below. So, those kind of things you can clearly see in the three dimensional structure. So, here the movement is from the left hand side or in the counterclockwise direction. So, this is what is called the minus isomer and if we move on to the next one here it is a little bit different case. How do we give configuration R or S to this particular compound. So, these kind of uh, phenyl with uh, two hetero atoms we have to identify what is a pilot atom. So, identify the pilot atom and then we have to give priority to the groups that are connected. So, one important things what we have to remember in assigning the numbering is you can choose whichever pilot atom, but the pilot atom should reach the hetero atom because in the aromatic ring also there is a hetero atom. So, from the pilot atom we have to reach the hetero atom very quickly. So, in other words the hetero atom attached to the carbon should have the least number then that carbon is chosen as the pilot atom because in this particular case we have two types one is we can have the let me put this as a left side and this as the right side. So, we have this is the right side, this is the left side. So, let us look at uh, how we can identify the pilot atom. So, this is the left side and this is the right side. So, this is the right one, this is the left one. So, which side we have to choose is basically decided by the substituent on the benzene ring or the aromatic ring should get the lowest number. So, if we start from the left side the hetero atom here there is nothing called the priority and other thing we simply go from the hetero atom to the other hetero atom. So, 1, 2, 3. So, this is the closest number we can actually reach the hetero atom which is present in the aromatic ring. If we start from the left carbon as the pilot atom and if we choose the right carbon as a pilot atom we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the fourth carbon is having the uh, substituent. So, here we do not call this like a highest priority or lowest priority we will only look at the substituent what is present here. If there are more than one substituent present then only we will have to go which one will get the highest priority. Since we have only one group we can actually uh, just uh, settle with that particular atom only. So, if we start from the right carbon as the pilot atom the substituent is present on fourth carbon. If we start from the left one this is present at 3. So, this is having the lowest number. So, this gets the priority or we have to number or give that assignment based on this particular uh, arrangement only. So, here if you look at the three dimensional structure this is the pilot atom I am looking from this particular carbon. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is how we actually go here and if you look at in this one 1, 2, 3 this is going in the clockwise direction we can say here we it goes in the counterclockwise direction. 
So, if it is going in the clockwise direction, this is basically called the R isomer. So, if it is in the counterclockwise, this is S isomer, but here the lowest number is uh, given only for the right side uh, uh, for this type of arrangement only. So, when we look from this pilot atom that is the left hand side pilot atom, we reach the hetero atom very quickly here. So, this compound is given the R configuration. So, if you look at uh, the final one, so this is having the minus because we go here in the counter clockwise direction. So, counter clockwise direction is minus and here we have the clockwise direction 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, this is R and this is M, M for minus. So, the assigned configuration for this molecule is 1 M and 2 R. Let us recap what we have seen so far. In the summary, we are going to look at uh, in this particular session, uh, we have seen about confirmation that is various conformational structures of cyclic systems, mainly the cyclohexane structure, uh, structures. There we have seen uh, what is the diaxial interaction and uh, what is the 1, 2 cis and 1, 2 trans arrangements, whether the groups are in the equatorial and axial positions, all those things we have seen. Based on that, we have decided what is going to be the stability of the compound and we have also seen about assigning configuration to various compounds. So, here we used the CIP rule or the con in gold prolog system. So, what group will get the highest priority and when there are double bonds or multiple bonds, how do we consider each uh, substituents, all those things we have seen. Based on that, we have also assigned the configuration to few compounds and then we have also seen about axial, planar and helical chirality. So, what is axial chirality? what is planar chirality and what is helical chirality, how to assign configuration whether it is plus or a minus or it is R or S, all those assignments we have given. So, with that we conclude this session. Thank you.